Hello everyone, it's Tara and I'm here today to do a design team project for Miniature Luxuries and Papers. I'm going to be using this Dream Garden collection by Scrap Boys. It's so beautiful. It has these beautiful blue jays, so many florals, these like uh, worn wood grains. They're just so pretty. So here I'm just flipping through them real quick so that you can see what all of the papers look like. I won't be using all of these today. I'll actually only be using I think one or two of them, but I just wanted to show you the papers I had from the collection. And then what I'm going to be doing with them today is altering a wooden birdhouse. To start off the project, I'm going to be taking this Stamperia Allegro acrylic paint in the shade Ancient Pink. And I'm just gonna put a little bit of that onto a palette and I'm gonna paint the entire birdhouse just so that I have a base. So if any um, parts of like the papers or the birdhouse shows through the papers, it'll have a pink background. And then this will just give a nice base to put other mediums and things on top of as well. Once I'm done painting, I'm going to set it aside to dry, and while it's drying, I'm going to fussy cut some elements out of this uh, paper that comes with the collection. I love this paper. There's some butterflies, some clocks, birds, so many florals and leaves, so I'm just going to cut out a couple different things that I want to use. Mostly uh, this bird I definitely wanted to use, and a clock, and some flowers, and two butterflies. I wish fussy cutting in real life was this fast. That would be so satisfying. Um, I do have a Cricut, but I can never get it to cut exactly where I want to when I scan things into my computer and then try to line it up to cut it properly. So I just take the time to cut things out with my scissors. It hurts my hand and I get hand cramps, but it's, uh, it's better than relying on the machine to not do it accurately. Now I have all my elements cut out and you can see everything that I have cut out for this project. I don't use everything that I have cut out, but I wanted to cut out a lot of elements, so I had some different things to play around with today. And then I'm gonna measure the two roofs of the birdhouse so that I can pick a pattern paper to put on top of them. I'm just gonna kind of decoupage it onto the top. So I'm just gonna flip through my papers and see which one I want to use. I really wanted the birds to stand out because it is a birdhouse, so I decided to go with this paper right here, which has the little bird on the watering can and then also the wheel. To apply that, I'm going to use the Stamperia Mixed Media Glue. I hadn't used this glue previously, uh, but I've used it a few times and I really do enjoy it. I'm pretty new to decoupaging, I've done it a couple times. Um, and I think this glue is really nice because it does adhere well and it, I mean, it, once it's down, it's down. So you can definitely use it uh, for sticking down like heavier things as well, I would think. Maybe not like huge things, but it works really well for this technique. I did have a little bit of an issue on this first side where I put the entire, like I covered the entire roof with glue and then I put the whole paper down and I had some bubbling and it was just an error on my part completely. You'll see when I get to the second side that I kind of do step by step where I do a little bit of glue at the top, lay the paper down, and then do glue in the middle, lay that part of the paper down, and I kind of just do it in stages. So you'll see what I'm talking about here. I only put glue at the top, and then I'm going to put the paper down and just really adhere it. Just push down on it with my hands so that it's nice and flat and there's no bubbles. Even the bubbles that I did get in this project, uh, once everything dried, it they pretty much flattened themselves down, so it's really not that big of a deal if you get some bubbles. They do seem to kind of flatten themselves out after time, but I wanted to avoid them as much as possible. And then once I'm done laying everything down, I just take a thin layer of the glue and go over the entire top of the paper just to seal it all in. And this glue dries transparent and matte, so it doesn't distort your image at all. I'm 
I'm gonna turn the birdhouse onto its side so I can work on the front while that mixed media glue dries the top paper. And I'm gonna be using this stencil from Stamperia. I will have it linked down below, or I'll have it listed down below. Um, and I'll also have a link to the website where you can buy all the stuff that I'm using in today's video. And I'm going to be using the Stamperia Crackle Paste through this stencil. And because of the shape of the birdhouse and that little notch that sticks out, like where a bird would sit, I couldn't get my stencil completely flat. So the crackle paste smudged out a little bit, but that's completely, again, user error. Um, it was just hard to work around the shape of this. But now I'm just gonna take some thicker layers of the crackle paste around the edges to blend everything into the birdhouse. And also because I want some thicker crackle spots. So the thicker you put that crackle paste on, the bigger and deeper the cracks are going to be. So I'm just gonna put a couple different spots of this pattern on the front of the birdhouse and blend out the edges. Once I've let that completely dry and start the crackling, I'm going to take a crayon and I pretty much just want this blue in the cracks of the crackle paste. Uh, just kind of add, to add some of that blue color that's gonna be in the birds we're gonna incorporate later on. And I just want it to be subtle. So I'm going in first with the crayon, smudging it all out with my finger, and then I'm taking a wet brush to wet it so that it sinks more into those cracks. And then later on, you'll see, I will wipe off the excess. Once that blue color is smeared everywhere and deep into the cracks, I'm gonna take a baby wipe and just wipe off the top layer to kind of get rid of that excess blue so that it only stays down in those cracks. Some of it is left on the top. Um, I'm gonna blend that in in a minute, but I just wanted kind of like a shadow of this blue color just so the birdhouse wasn't all pink. And then I'm gonna take that pink color, the same one, the uh, Stamperia Allegro in Ancient Pink, and I'm gonna water it down a little bit with a wet brush and I'm gonna use that to blend out the edges of that crackle paste so it blends in with the pink birdhouse so it's not just like a white line around the edges. I want everything to just be blended and look as seamless and organic as possible. And then once all those edges are blended, it still looked a little bit too white on that crackle paste, like the main kind of shape of the, of the stencil of the crackle paste, if that makes sense. So I'm just lightly kind of uh, washing over it with that watered down pink paint. And it's gonna help the blue blend in with the pink as well. I just didn't want such a stark white and blue and pink, like in just random spots. I want everything to be blended. Next, I'm gonna take some gesso from Stamperia. This is just white gesso, and this one's pretty thick, so it's really nice for dry brushing, which is what I'm gonna do here. I, again, just thought that everything needed kind of a white wash over it to um, make it a little bit more cohesive. And I think in the end, this just gives it kind of like an old, more, a little bit more like vintage and worn kind of vibe. 
and I think it just looks really nice. After the gesso, I still wasn't 100% happy with how it was looking. So I'm going to take the Stamperia Patina paste in the shade Ombra. And this is like an antiquing kind of paste. And I am just, like I did with the crayon, taking some and just rubbing it in with my finger. Just to give some spots kind of like an old antique look. I really wanted this birdhouse to be bright and colorful but also look a little bit worn and faded in some spots so i'm just going to rub that paste in and then i'm going to again take a clean baby wipe and wipe off any excess i really just want this in those cracks and just subtle Now I'm going to let that dry completely and in the meantime I'm going to take some ink and I'm just going to blend it on the edges of everything that I fussy cut out earlier. I think this just helps to hide the, the stark white edges from when you cut the paper and helps it to blend in with your projects a little bit better. So I'm just taking a brown ink to do that. Now that I have those all inked up, I'm gonna go back to the birdhouse and just take a random flower stamp that I had in my stash. And I am just stamping some random spots all over the birdhouse. They're not complete flowers. They look like, you know, a little bit worn. Like maybe they were fully stamped at one point and they've started to wear away. That's the look I was going for. So I'm really not being precise. I'm just sticking it in the ink and sticking it on the birdhouse. And of course we have to do white splatters. So I have watered down some gesso and I'm just taking it on a brush and splattering it all over the birdhouse. You'll see now that I'm flipping it around, I have been working on the entire thing. I just didn't show that part because it was all the same techniques that I've been showing you on the front. So you can see that's what the back looks like. And then the sides don't have any stenciling. I just did the uh, gesso dry brushing and then some of the antiquing paste. I'm also going to splatter on the top of the roof where the paper is. This is the layout I decided to go with for the things that I cut out. And I'm just going to take some foam squares and start popping things up where I think they would look the best. So I have some flowers and a leaf at the bottom and I'm going to put the bird on top of those. I have a clock and then a butterfly at the top. And I am using Stamperia's craft glue just to make sure that that foam actually adheres. The foam tape's pretty strong, but I always like to put an extra layer of glue on there just to be safe. I didn't want the back of the birdhouse to be completely plain just because I'm not sure how I'm gonna display this. So I put just one little bird and some flowers on the back as well so that it wouldn't be so empty if you do see it from the back.
had one butterfly left and I really wanted to use it. Um, I wasn't sure if I wanted to use it on the sides or anything and I decided that this top area of the front of the birdhouse looked a little bit plain. So I decided to just pop him up at the top and then that's gonna complete this project. Um, I didn't have a very slow clip of me showing the birdhouse. So at the end here, you will see some pictures. For now, I'm just kind of like fussying around with some of the leftover pieces that I had cut out. I wasn't sure where I wanted to put anything else. I did decide to add this leaf underneath the clock here just to add a little bit more green to the front of the birdhouse. And then I'm still gonna play around with maybe putting a flower or some leaves at the top. And I just decided that it was a little bit too much. And sometimes when I think it looks nice, I just need to stop instead of keep adding more and more. Here are the finished pictures of my project for today with miniature luxuries. I will have the website linked below. Thank you guys so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed.